sexy product. Boy, you got it. Get them drylix while I ride it. Got me acting. Good evening, everybody. Happy Sunday. Who's excited for tonight's call? We've got a very, very amazing guest speaker. Hey, Bianca, it's good to see you. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited. I'm going to hand over to Bianca. I'm just really excited for, her, for you guys to hear from Bianca. We've connected really on social media, haven't we, Bianca, like recently? Um, obviously, you're part of um, Sabrina Jackson's and Paddy's team through Laura Color. So that's, I guess, how we got connected, because obviously we work closely with Laura as well. Um, amazing, amazing team. So it's just great to have connected with you. And I don't know, I just think we've just connected really well, haven't we? And um, obviously, I did a Zoom call for you and your team. We've done a few split lives. And you're just absolutely crushing it over in New Zealand. I think you're like top partner over there at the moment. And you're just absolutely smashing it. And um, yeah, I love your story. I just think you're uh, like a lovely, lovely human being. Like you've just got such a kind heart. And I've not even met you in person, but you're just a lovely, lovely lady. Um, and I love that you love the gym as well, like me. And I love that. But you're also a mum, and there's, you know, so many great things to your story. So um, I'm really excited to hear from you. So Bianca, what would, let me just see if I can spotlight you and then we will, I'd love it if you could just start off Bianca, obviously just, you know, introduce yourself um, and just tell us a bit about, you know, give us like a bit of a recap about your story and your background. That would be amazing. Good morning, everyone. So from my side, it's good morning. Um, I woke up and I was like, Ooh, I need to look good for this call. I need to, you know, put on my, my happy face here. So I put you back on gallery because I don't want to look at myself, you know, I know what I look like. So um, thank you so much, Amy, for having me on, guys. Um, so I, I'm just going to, like, dive straight straight into it. So, yes, I connected with Amy because I've been watching her story and I, I watched her on a, um, a call one day and I thought she was amazing and she, she looks fantastic. And um, she has such a good vibe about it. So I, I love connecting with people like that. And um, I'm just going to like roll back to the beginning. So um, I'm South African, as you can hear from my accent, I sound a bit strange. Um, if I talk too fast, like just throw me in, you know, like say, they're, used to, it, yeah. uh, they're <laughs> used to it with me, don't worry. <laughs> But it's not a bit funny, I know, like um, people people will say to me all the time, like, I love your accent. And I'm like, I don't have an accent. You have an accent. You know, this is what I sound like. So I'm a South African living in New Zealand with an upline in Ireland. Like, how crazy is that? So um, moved to New Zealand four years ago with my family. I've been married for 14 years. I know, right? Like, if there's anyone that wants to give me a, a trophy, I'll take it. Um, I'm a mom of three boys. Yay, Kabila. Um, I'm a mom of three sons, um, 16, 12, and 6. So they drive me absolutely crazy. Um, but we moved to New Zealand four years ago after we, we had some traumatic events in South Africa. I got held up by gunpoint. Um, for anyone that doesn't know about South Africa, the history or the, the living conditions are pretty bad there. And I got held up by gunpoint, me and my um, second born son, and we almost didn't survive it, but we did survive. And um, that made us like look into other options because there's just no future in South Africa anymore for kids. And um, we just decided to look for other options. So my husband's actually British. Can you believe it? Like um, his mom introduced me to him. I'm sure she regrets it now, but he's actually British and we had an option to go to the UK or did we want to um, look at an avenue in New Zealand and we decided to come to New Zealand. Um, I think the culture is very similar and I've just always wanted to live on an island. So um, <clears throat> it wasn't what I expected when I came here. Like I thought everyone's going to be wearing flip flops and flowers around their neck, but they don't. Like don't anyone tell you they do because they don't. Um, <laughs> but never mind. We came to New Zealand four years ago. And um, you know what, I've been a personal trainer in South Africa, like I built my own fitness studio in the background of my life. And that was what I was going to do permanently. Um, I became a personal trainer in 2013. And like I built up this studio at home and I thought, well, this is that I'm going to be training people forever because I love people. I love helping people. And then we decided to immigrate. So I had to sell up everything that I had. And um, that was pretty traumatic and on its own. You know, it took me years to build up a studio with equipment and my customers, my clients. 
And when we came to New Zealand, um, I said, well, I'm just going to carry on with a fitness career. People here are, are into fitness a lot. Like everyone here has legs. That's one thing I want to say to everyone. Like the women here, all of them have amazing calves and legs and stuff. And, you know, um, that just intrigued me and saying, I'm going to carry on with a fitness year. And what happened was, guys, I had a one-year-old at the time and um, suddenly the carpet got ripped out underneath me. I had no more support structure. I had no one to look after my children when I go to the gym at five in the morning. I had no one to look after them at seven at night. My husband's in corporate, so he works extremely long hours. So basically, it all came down to me doing it all. And um, what happened was I decided then, okay, I'm going to become a stay-at-home mom and, um, you know, just be at home with the kids, you know, because that's what a lot of women here do. I was at home for six months. It was the worst six months of my life. Um, I, I'm not a stay-at-home mom. There's nothing wrong with it. But for me, I need people and I need to feel productive. I've been working since I was 15 years old. I've never had to ask a man for his for money. Um, and I just, I felt like, come on, like I can't be sitting at home the whole day doing absolutely, not nothing, like they, they do a lot of work, but I needed to be productive. And then became the issue of finding a job in New Zealand. Like you don't have Kiwi experience. No one wants to give you a job. And then you have to work around three children, three schools, have someone to look after them. It just became an absolute nightmare to find someone to look after them. I don't just, don't, don't just want to leave my children with someone I don't even know. And I eventually ended up working with, for my local GP because I do have some medical experience as well. And... I just knew that this wasn't my life. Like this wasn't what I wanted to do. And we went into lockdown in New Zealand. COVID hit New Zealand in 2020. And we went into our first lockdown. And one day I was just sitting there minding my own business. And I received a, a friend request from an absolute stranger. And I don't know why I accepted. it. Next thing in my inbox, offering me a business opportunity. And I'm like, hey, who's this weirdo? And I don't know why, guys, like I'm from South Africa, like everything that gets sent to us in our minds, it's a scam. Like I've had my identity stolen about four times in South Africa, like my identity has been stolen. I've opened up accounts on my name, like I still get emails all the time about people stealing my identity. And um, something we're very careful about, like talking to strangers about stuff like that. And um, I said to the guy, okay, sure, I'll take a look at this stuff. I don't know why I did it. Sabrina thinks I had a crush on her husband. That's why I said it. And let me set the record straight. I do not have a crush on Patty. No, I have daddy issues. My husband's way older. I like the older men. And he, I, I never looked at the videos and stuff. And he said to me, like, um, like he'll check in later with me. And he, he did follow up with me like a day or two later. And I felt bad for not having to not not looking at the the info he sent me. So I thought, okay, let me just quickly check what he sent what he sent me. So I looked at the videos and stuff, and I the first thing when I saw the products, I was like, oh my goodness, like I need this. Like I've got three sons, they don't want to eat fruits or vegetables. Like I just love it. I need I need these products. And I remember sending it to my mom in South Africa, saying to her, look at these products. And she says, that's so exciting. You never have to eat again. And I said, no, mom, you still have to eat. Like uh, it's just um it's just nutrients. And I don't know, guys, I don't know why I said yes to the business as well. I, I don't know why I said yes. I said to my husband, you know, the, the, uh, the, it, it's such a low investment to just jump into. And I just decided to do it. At that time, I didn't have the money. South Africa, I had my credit card from South Africa. And um, my, my South African bank account paid for my paid for my franchise so that's the first thing like no one has the money to join okay like I didn't have the money I put it on my credit card and I don't know why I said yes you need I can't if, even if I think back I don't still don't know why but I decided to say yes and I think from the beginning I um, was taught on early on to take it serious like if you take this serious it's gonna if you treat it like a business it's gonna pay you like a business and I went on the products um and I was I didn't feel anything different or nothing happened but about at six weeks into lockdown, I woke up one day. Now, um, bear in mind, I go to gym every day and that's how I get my endorphins. That's how I feel good. And I couldn't go to gym for six weeks. And I woke up one morning and I just felt amazing. Like I couldn't explain it. I just felt absolutely amazing. And that was the products. And to me, I started getting a belief. So it's really important to have a belief in the products. Like if you don't believe in it, then it's very difficult to sell it. But I got a serious belief in the products and I thought, you know, that if the products, if this is how I feel, there's got to be other women also that, that need to feel, feel like I did. Now, bear in mind, I'm an immigrant, didn't know anyone in New Zealand. I knew two people and they were very far away from me. 
um, they didn't know anyone. So who on earth would I be able to sell to? So then they told me, sorry, we don't sell in South Africa. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, what am I going to do here? Who am I going to sell to? And we have a very good system in, 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 in place where our DMO consists of adding five, five to 10 strangers every day on, on social media and I'm connecting with people I don't know. And I was just like, excuse me, I do not add anyone on Facebook. Like people add me, I don't add anyone. Like that was my mindset. Like I will never ever will I add anyone. But I couldn't get a sale because I had no one to sell to. And um, I just decided to go for it. Like what was the worst thing that could happen? You know, I could add people that could say no, you know, so on. And um, started adding people couldn't get a sale it took me forever to get a sale I eventually got a sale from a doctor in Australia and I thought you know like this is exciting and then what I did was for partner plus I went and I ordered everything else on the menu <laughs> to get to partner plus like that's what I did because I saw people moving around me and yeah I'm stuck like I'm on this side of the world and my whole upline's in Ireland like when it's morning here it's night there and I have to wait the whole day to be able to connect with them and you know it, it was a bit of a nightmare but looking back it's my it's taught me so much but um couldn't get a sale got a sale got a partner plus and then um for senior partner yeah you have to sign up a team and you have to like um put on a lot of volume and i couldn't get a sale like nothing would happen i was adding people i was talking to people got rejected like it it, it i just you know and one day i just said you know whatever like when it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, but I, I stayed consistent. I still did what I had to do every single day, like jumping out of my comfort zone. It was very uncomfortable for me to talk to people I didn't know. And because to me, social media was just fun. Like I was having a lot of fun on social media, you know, like just that's what it's about, you know, sharing my life and basically already doing the business without knowing I'm doing the business. And then just one day, guys, like out of nothing and nowhere, my business exploded like literally exploded the orders were coming in left and right and I, I couldn't keep up I hit senior partner we went to sales coordinator I had a team of 10 in a, in five months time because what happened was now you have to remember I didn't know anyone like who's going to trust me but because I am an immigrant and what happened was like with me like our um, our dreams, our careers, like a lot of women like me, we leave our careers behind and most of us become stay-at-home moms in a new country because we've got no one to look after our children. And having someone look after your kids costs an absolute fortune. You know, I know it's expensive that side as well. It costs a fortune. So what happens is moms, it doesn't make sense to go work and then um, pay for childcare and you've got like a hundred bucks left a month. So it doesn't make sense. So a lot of women just stay at home, no one to look after the kids, no career, no money sitting at home, husband is, you know, like has all the control when it comes to money. And I, and being a South African, we are very proud people. Um, and that's one thing I've learned here, like we're very proud people. We don't reach out and say, hey, I need help or something. We'd rather suffer in silence. And I'm sure it's like that with, with a lot of you ladies as well. But um, I started attracting women like me, women that were feeling lonely, women that were feeling I'm in a new country because yeah, it's super exciting when you come to a new country and it's safe. And our kids can play outside and we don't have to worry someone's going to shoot us while we're in the driveway. Like these are the fears we have every single day in South Africa. But then the honeymoon phase is over and then you're stuck in a new country with no dreams, no ambitions, no nothing. You just, yeah. And I just remember saying to myself, like, there's got to be more to life. Like I did not immigrate from South Africa, like all our money got divided through 10 because the rand is so weak against the New Zealand dollar. So you can imagine if you were a billionaire, you know, a millionaire, okay? Not that I was a billionaire, but your money gets divided by 10. So, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's one struggle after the next to get you. And I just said, there's got to be more to life. Like I did not come here to work in a doctor's office and um, like, this is my life for the next year. My children have a future, but what about me? What about me, you know? And then what happened was... Um, I realized how lonely and I was busy going into, I don't want to say depression, but I just started feeling like maybe I must just go back, you know, because I got no one here and it's just, it's, it's, it's expensive and you know, your mind like plays all these tricks on you. But because I was consistent, um, I just kept on talking to people. I kept on sharing them, even though I didn't have major success. I just kept on sharing other people's successes and I was I, got, I started getting hungry, like super, super hungry um, for this opportunity because I saw people moving and I saw what it could do for your life and um, got to AC, got to QSAC and when I got to QSAC, 
just before that, so I built up a team of about 10 people. Now, where did I get these people? I got them all on social media because I there was no one else I could, I could sign up because I didn't know anyone. But I found them on social media. And no, they didn't sign up overnight. But me being consistent, checking in with them, loving everything on their page, loving commenting, how are you doing today? It's just the thing of following up with people. The fortune is genuinely in the follow-up. But I got to SC. QSSC and I, I completely stopped recruiting because I had a team of 10 and I thought in America we had them here we had like I thought well this is it I'm going to PMD plus I've got my team like you know <laughs> this is it I don't need to recruit anymore and what I did was I went into management mode like I completely just focused on the team that I had and I was like spoon feeding them I was so scared that they were going to leave so I did everything for them like if they wanted something you know I just quickly went and got it for them and basically did everything for them and we just before our first conference they all left me <laughs> guys like every single team member except one all of them left like just started dropping off, you know, like it's for, for different reasons, they just started dropping off. So here I am, got to QSSC with a team of 10 and they all left, like all of them, except one lady that doesn't do a lot in the business anyway, but she she didn't leave. And I went into like serious depro mode, like what now, you know, I felt defeated. I, the rejection was, I took it so personal, you know, I thought like I've, I've worked so hard like day and night I worked so hard to get these people and build the relationships and and got to a very good point in my, in my business where I was earning like decent money because um, I started making a lot of sales as well and I built up a strong team and they all left and I remember one day um, also in the morning did our, our sculpt movement call because it's at night with them and it's in the morning with me and I was busy getting ready for work and I always jump on the team calls, even though I'm busy, I try and at least listen to it while I'm getting ready. And on came a lady that was an NMD in the business. And she said when she was in the business, someone, she also built up a massive team and they all left her. And I was like, boom, like that got my attention. Like that's me right now. And what she did was she never gave up. She just kept on going. And I was so grateful that I heard that. So that's that's probably my one of my biggest tips for everyone is never, ever miss a team call. Like team calls are, you guys, like it is so, so, so important. Like you never know what you're going to hear, what you need to hear. And I always say to my team, like, I don't care what you have to do, but never, ever miss your team calls. Like the, to me, that is food for the soul. And um, that's what's going to keep your business going. So I heard that this lady, she didn't give up. She went, carried on again. And I said, okay, I reached out to her and um, I said to her, like your story really inspired me. I needed to hear that because my whole team has just left and it was all I was talking about. But I decided there, right there and then, like if I could do this before, I could do it again. Um, and just before they all left me, I got invited to a leadership call for um, Juice Plus New Australia. And I'm sitting there on the call in the leadership call with no team, you know, like what am I doing here? Um, I got introduced to Simon Chan and also me still showing up like I got I, I mean I could have just said like I'm not doing this you know like I've got no team I'm no leader you know and um, on the call he said every six months it's going to get easier every six months you are going to change your business gonna, is going to change it's going to get easier you're going to the way you talk to people is going to get easier like everything will just change and I needed to hear that like Jenny and I needed to hear that and I just decided I'm like this is that I'm not quitting I'm, I'm doing it and um, after con we then we had conference went to conference and I had a fire lit in me like such a fire lit in me like I, I like I couldn't breathe I couldn't wait to get home I was so excited seeing these people um what they've done with their lives and I went home and the next week I um, signed up 22 people in one week I signed up 22 people in one week because I had that that fire that vision like yes I'm doing this signed up people and um it's been absolutely amazing from there on I went on became partner of the month I was rookie of the month and I, I just thought you know like I'm, I'm just doing that like so so for me the biggest thing is do you know where you're going <laughs> Like, do you know where you're going? It doesn't matter where you are now. Like, do you know where you're going? Like, for me, I know. I know that I know that I know I'm going to be a PMD plus. Like, I don't care how long it takes, um, but I'm going there. Like, for me, I want a big yacht and I want like 
um, hulky uh, and bulky Spanish men waving me down with a way with a, a leaf, and I want to be fed grapes on my yacht. You know, I want to be like, and I'll come pick you all up. You just send me your coordinates, and I'll come pick you up. Okay, coming with my yacht. So that's where I'm going. Like I'm seeing it. This is my vision on my vision board. So I've made a vision board as well, and I put it at the back of my phone. Um, this is my vision board. It's on my phone, it's on my screensaver, and you can have so much fun with it, doing it on your phone. You can make a nice collage, everything that I want on here, and I've printed this out and I've put it everywhere, like where I want to be, what I want to earn, like my family, my freedom, absolutely everything that I want, and I look at it every day, and I'm like feeling, and I'm feeling that absolute gratitude. So um, I always say to my team, like, if you're not in a state of absolute gratitude before you do your DMO, don't do your DMO. Get up, go for a walk, I don't know, do do what you need to do, but you have to feel good. You have to feel grateful. You have to feel amazing before you do your DMO. So my DMO every day, try and add five to 10 people. No, they're not going to all, all the time accept, and that's okay. Um, reaching out to people, seeing are they open. I um, mean, like some people want to dive in straight and say, hey, I've got a business opportunity. You want to look at it. Some people do. Some people, some days I do it. And some days I don't. It doesn't matter. But for me, it's reaching out to people every single day start a conversation happy birthday how are you doing i love what you're wearing like not being false but like genuinely start a conversation with people and what happens is guys like if people are not signing up with you now the biggest thing i've learned is people come back people come back they're always watching you if you're not serious they're not going to take you serious so that that's the biggest thing i've learned like people that ignored me that you now all the rejections i got like six months ago one year later people are messaging me okay i'm ready now and what i've learned is not to judge not to say oh they're all ignoring me no one wants to join my team and no, 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 no. we all have the same product we all have the same business you need to remember that um nothing is different for we all have the same platform here but people are watching to see if you are serious and what happened was people that ignored me and rejected me a year ago, they're now messaging me. They're now saying, okay, now I'm ready. Like, what are you doing? Okay, I'm seeing you're still doing this. Are you still doing that thing? And I'm proud. Like, I am like, are you proud? Are you proud of what you're doing? Like, do you, when you talk about Juice Plus and this business, are you excited? Like, yeah, I'm selling fruits and vegetables, you know? Like, never in my life that I think I'm going to be selling fruits and vegetables, you know? <clears throat> I never saw this for my future, but are you excited? Are you passionate? Because people can pick up, you know, if you're like, yeah, you know, doing this thing. No, be excited. Like people need to like completely feed off your vibe when you say, yes, I'm doing juice plus and I'm loving it. I know I'm going, buying a yacht and I'm selling fruits and vegetables. Like, you know, mine is displayed everywhere where I am. I take them with me and um, people are going to come back. That's the biggest thing I want to say to you. Don't worry about who's signing up now. This, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Don't worry about who is rejecting you now because people come back. And oh my goodness, I've had people reach out to me that ignored me. I even forgot about the existence. Now they're coming back. So that's the biggest thing. People will come back. You just don't give up. Um, what was my next point? Yes, energy. Like you have to feel good, guys. Like if you, when you do your DMO and you're feeling, mm, I'm not feeling it today. Um, one thing Simon Chan has taught us is, Get a song, like get one song that that vibes you, that, that completely gets you up and you use only use that song for your DMO, like put that song on and, you know, feel amazing before you do it. Have a song before you do your workout, like choose one song that makes you feel um, amazing, that makes you feel alive. And that's what I do. I can't tell you guys what I listen to because you'll probably pass out if you hear what... <laughs> I listen to a bit of crazy music and I can't share that with you guys. I'm a little embarrassed, but it gets me extremely hyped up when I listen to it and I feel like I can take over the world. So when days when you're feeling like oh, I can't do this, at least do the bare ass minimum. Um, bam, do the bare ass minimum. Like if you're feeling I can't do it today and my personal life is this or the kids are not listening or my husband's not liking the business. Don't worry about that. At least do the bare as at least do something in your business. You know, my business has been in my top three priorities since day one. It doesn't matter what goes on in my life. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what my husband says. It doesn't matter if my kids are um, ill or whatever. My business is always in my top three priorities because I want it to pay me like a business. And I've always done that. Like it's my family, it's my faith, and it's my, my, my business. My, my business is always, if I have to choose between folding the laundry or doing a DMO or doing a call with the customer, guess who wins? Laundry is not going to bring me money. 
So that's always my top three priorities. Even when we moved down from Auckland to Christchurch, um, it was a 17 hour drive. And I, had, I pulled over five hours into, into the drive. I pulled over in the middle of nowhere in some um, field. I pulled over in a field and I did a call with someone that I committed to calling a few days prior. Like that's how committed I am. My children had to keep quiet in the car and they knew that mommy's working now. And that's what it takes. It's genuinely, that's what it takes is to, um, your word is your honor. When you say you're gonna do something, you do it. Like, like that's it. Like you commit to your business and everything that you do now, even they didn't start, I didn't sign up. You didn't sign up with two daughters, but it's okay. I still did what I needed to do. And um, I, I want to mention this, guys, like, I didn't know anyone. Like, I didn't know anyone. I didn't have anyone to sell to. But because I was consistent, that's genuinely the main thing. When it comes to team, when it comes to sales, it's just about being consistent. And you'll hear that all the time. Just be consistent. Keep going. Last year, I was in the top five sales for New Zealand and Australia. Like, I was a top five people for sales. You know, and I, don't, I don't know anyone. And if I can do that, everyone else can do it. But it's just because I'm excited, I'm passionate, and um, I'm not making any excuses. Stop making excuses. Like, no, I can't do it now because we all have 24 hours in the day. We all have the same time. Everyone's got a life. Everyone is busy. No one has the money. No one has the time. You need to find time to do these things. We all have 24 hours um, in a day. And I was in top five sales. Like uh, people ask me, you know, to do a call and tell them how am I getting all my sales and roll back a year. I couldn't get one. Couldn't get one sale. And um, this year at conference, I became partner of the year, guys. Like I actually became partner of the year. And I'm super, super proud of that. Um, being a, a girl from a crappy mining town in South Africa, you know, like in South Africa, I became partner of the year. And that was, oh my goodness, like, and I don't say that to, to brag, but to me, it's, it's the biggest deal of my life, like genuinely it is, because it's such a testimonial of what I've been through. And then people look at, uh, at me a lot of time and they'll say, yeah, you know, but she's got to eat. I don't. Like, I also get rejected. Like, people send me horrible things on, on social media sometimes. I get rejected and I get sacrifices. Like, I'm, I'm working on my business every single day of my life. Like, absolutely every single day of my life, I'm working on my business. Because that's how important it is to me. Um, top three priorities: <clears throat> be a product of the product, be excited, be excited, be passionate. Like when you talk to people, make sure that you feel, whoa, like this is it. And then a lot of people say to me, but I, I don't have the success yet. How can I talk about the business? You share other people's success. You start building that belief in other people. What, what other people like? I'm looking at Amy. I'm looking at Sabrina. Like I'm not where they are yet, but it's okay. I know I'm going to go there. I know I'm going to go there. I've done it twice now. If I could build a business before that completely collapsed, um, I can do it again. So for me, what I try and do every single month, like at the first of the month, like the first October, first November, whatever, at the end of them, I scroll to the last day of my diary and I write sales and I write team. So I'm already putting my order into the universe. So I, I'll try, I, I aim for about eight sales every month. So I write one, two, three, four, five to eight. And I circle it. So there's no names yet. And team, I'll write two or three or whatever team I want. So I'm putting in my order in the beginning of the month. Like, this is what I want. I'm grateful. I'm feeling it. I'm excited. I don't know how it's going to happen. But um, I'm, I'm believing. I'm grateful that it is going to happen. I feel that gratitude. And then as the sales come in, I write in the name at one. I write the name at two. And I've done this for over a year. And I promise you, hand on heart, it's worked every single month. Like, I've put on one to two team every single month and I've hit my target for sales every single month and that's just by visioning and that's just by feeling it um so yeah Amy is there anything else you want to ask me because I don't want to get too carried yeah, away no, no. honestly that was amazing I was just I was like making a few notes whilst you were talking because it's just absolutely incredible so many tips and team absolutely loving you by the way like the chat is is blowing up and just seeing people's expressions is amazing so i just want to take it back to the beginning because you said that you joined from a random ad and a message from a stranger um which i just think just shows how you know when we're doing our dmos every day and when we are like adding people we're messaging people like guys we just don't know who that person's going to be or what their situation is or you know how they're going to receive that and the fact that you know that just gets me excited you know that you're obviously receiving that and you were you know you joined from that you know but it wasn't like you know a message and you joined straight away it was still a process 
and yeah. had a fellow followed up with you and obviously he's an island you're in new zealand so that's just really exciting isn't it guys you know you just don't know who's the next person going to be that you're going to add and you're going to message so for me like that's just amazing that blows me away yeah. and that gets me excited um and then the other thing was just how you just had like a slow start and how it took you ages to get your first customer because there's quite a lot of newbies on the call so what like could you talk a bit more about that maybe and just like you know obviously you said that you didn't give up and it took you ages to get your first customer so and obviously like as well you didn't like to like add new friends as well at, at the start and I think that's the thing yeah. when we all start this business it's overcoming those little hurdles isn't it and it's changing yeah. you know your social media is now like your is your business so it's um obviously for those of us that have been doing this a, a longer time yeah. it's so normal for us now but for someone new it's like oh my god it's scary so yeah kind of talk us a bit more about how yeah. you overcome those things at the start so for me like i always use myself as an example because yeah we have a lot of team that are not comfortable with adding new strangers but you have to think about building your audience like if people don't see you and don't know about it how are they ever going to buy from you and you never please don't ever look at it as as spam like, oh, I don't want to add new people. Come from a point of who can I help today? Mm -hmm. Like always when you make this business about other people and you see who can I help today? And it's not about me. I genuinely feel that there are people that need this product in their life and that need this business. And as soon as you make it about someone else, it becomes easier. So I say to my team in the morning as well on the call, like I say, who are you going to help today? And once you focus on other people, it becomes easier. And if I take myself as an example always, and if Patty never messaged me, I don't know where I would have been. And I cannot be the only person in the world that that feel that's lonely immigrant that feels depressed, that feels um, like there's got to be more to life. And you know what? There are people like you that like me that absolutely needed this business. And I say this all the time. This business saved me. Genuinely, guys, it saved me. It saved me from going back to South Africa. It saved me from just living a so-so life to living, yay, I'm happy every day. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what's going to happen every day. And it's your, it's your mission. It's your, it's, a, you, it's your duty to go and find people like me that want this opportunity. And if someone didn't reach out to me, like just, just reach out a random stranger, you're never going to know. And you need to remember one thing because you said yes to this business and the products and this opportunity somewhere along the line somewhere in your downline that's going to be able to change someone else's life and it's going to be because you said yes and that's what I always say to people like don't make it about you somewhere someone's life is completely going to be changed because you said yes and you know what you're going to be paid on absolutely everything that 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 they they are going to do so it's um, helping other people get to their dreams and what helps you get you get to your dreams you know it's like um it's like zig ziglar says you know um the more people you help with their dreams the easier it's going to your dreams are also going to become a reality so don't make it about yourself when it comes to the business and the products like when you reach out to people don't be scared because you never know who's just going to say yes you never ever know who's going to say yes yes people are going to say no but no doesn't mean no it means no not now like if someone's just had a promotion at work, someone's just had a baby, um, the timing's probably not going to be right. It's going to be no, not now. But once you maybe message that same person four months later and they've had a shit day on a Monday and the boss has been screaming at them the whole day or like the child is sick and they can't get off work and you message again, the timing might be right then. Yes, I've had a shit day. I don't want to be at my job anymore. Like I need to get out of this. There's no other way. So it's all about timing. And I think the biggest thing when it comes to sales and business is watch. For me, that's the biggest thing. I'm always watching on Facebook. Like who's complaining? Because if you listen to people, they're always complaining. Who's complaining? Who's got an issue? Like, yes, when someone says on Facebook, oh, I need to lose weight, like it's it's like a shock, it's a bloodbath, like everyone wants to go there. I can help you, I've got a product, da, 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 da. but it, it's listening and it's always watching, like who's complaining about their life, like who, who needs an extra money, who needs, it's always just watching. And like I said, it's all about timing because if you are constantly watching who's doing what, who's doing, who's what we in their life, someone somewhere, you're going to be able to help. And I think by being consistent, guys, like every day show your products, um, every day be excited about the business. Don't just do business and products every day. Like show your life. Like 
absolutely show your life every single day. If you're scared about uh, doing a live, I genuinely recommend live so much because your, your platform, instead of hiring a hall and paying for 100 people to come and four people come and getting out of bed and all these things, like Facebook gives you such a platform, you know, like thousands of people can see that. Five minutes can become thousands of people. And you know what? People that don't see it today, they're going to see it tomorrow or later on or whatever. People are going to see it. And you've got such an amazing platform to use to, to talk about your business. And you know what happens is if you carry on doing that, people will somewhere, somewhere along the line, people are going to refer other people to you. I have so many people that reach out to me that are not friends with me. I've never even known these people just because I'm consistent. Like people tell me, I've been watching you for so long and I'm like, who are you? You know, it's a bit creepy, but people are always watching. And that's why I've got a lot of sales and actually team as well from people I wasn't even friends on with Facebook. So my things are always set to public because I want my reach to be bigger. And um, yeah, that's it. Like the biggest thing guys, don't give up. Do not ever take a break if you need to take a break, but never, ever, ever give up. You never know, one of you might have the next Jeff Roberti. And I'm like, I'm sure Patty and Sabrina never saw this coming for me. And I don't want to like, you know, be fancy or anything here, but I've exploded in New Zealand for them. Jenny and I've exploded. We are in 10 different countries. Um, and you just never know the next person you stand up like me that's hungry, that wants this opportunity. And um, yeah, I see we're always going to time out, Amy. <laughs> Amazing, Bianca. Absolutely incredible. I love that you say, you know, you say to your team every day, like, who are you all going to help today? I think that's amazing. And to have that mindset is really, really important. And I just have to say again what you said a little bit earlier, which was what comes first, laundry or your DMO. And your DMO always comes first because your laundry is not going to make you money. And I love that. That was awesome. So, yeah, absolutely amazing. Cool, Bianca. I've got so many little notes here. Um, you've been amazing. Just quickly tell us, obviously, we've got like two minutes left. Just what has been like your like one biggest highlight from the business as we finish? Um, it's definitely partner of the year because I never... I never saw that coming. And to me, it's been the biggest honor ever, like becoming partner of the year. Um, and it's just a reflection, you know, of all the tears of all the, like I've tried to give up every single day in this business. Like I, I at least want to give up once a day because, <laughs> you know, it can be hard and everything that can go wrong in your business, guys, it's happened to me. Like everything that I've, people wanted to sue me. I've had people that say I stole their gummies, like, you know what? It's just tough situations never lost, but tough people do. Always remember that. Um, and it, the, the partner of the year was, for me, it was just a testimonial of not giving up. But that's what it takes. Like your business is going to do this all the time and it's okay. But you will eventually, it will get to the top if you don't give up. Just never, ever, ever give up. That, that's all I want to say about that. doesn't matter what goes on in your life right now. Um, put your business top three priorities and it's going to pay you like a business. Maybe not today. But when you when you wipe your eyes, two years are going to be gone and you're going to be where you want to be. Amazing. Amazing, Bianca. Absolutely incredible. Well, guys, feel free to connect with Bianca on social media, Bianca May. Um, and let's just quickly get a quick photo. I will uh, pop everyone back to Sarah. Hold on, we've got like 30 seconds left. Quick photo. Ready? Get cameras on. Three, two. Is everyone ready? Right, three, two, one. Oh, I think Kirsty's just come on there. I don't know if we got her in. One more. Three, two, one. Yay, awesome, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.